Welcome to the presentation of the LUISA update 1.9.0007. My name is Agim Imeri. The following topics concerning the update are covered in this video. The device update, including a battery update that improves the calculation of the remaining battery life of the internal and external batteries. A selection of whether the device is used non-invasively or invasively, including various automatic alarm settings, so-called presets, an improvement of the circuit test description, a special feature at the leakage high alarm setting in the single circuit valve system, an improvement of the inspiratory trigger in the single circuit valve system. Beyond the mentioned topics, uh, the update also includes various device optimizations, uh, for instance, an improved circuit test for 50 millimeter circuits, but we do not cover this device optimization during this presentation. Before we look at the changes in the device, we would like to show you how the update is carried out uh, because there's a special feature here when updating the internal and external batteries. First of all, we insert the USB flash drive and wait a few seconds until the following message appears. Now we confirm that we want to do the update and start the process. Now we again wait a couple of seconds uh, until the device reboots and until the update screen appears. In the lower left corner we see that the update file is now transferred to the, onto the device and now the update starts. As soon as the update is completed, the reboot button appears on the upper right corner. We now remove the USB flash drive and press reboot. After the reboot, the following message appears and describes how the battery update uh, needs to be carried out. We need to connect the power supply and we, uh, special attention must be paid if external batteries are used to connect these external batteries now as well because otherwise um, later on the external batteries can only be updated in the service menu by a trained technician. After connecting the power supply and the external batteries, we start the battery update. The battery update is completed now and the device again ready for use. If we take a closer look, we immediately notice the NIV symbol in the status bar. If we go now to the ventilation menu, we see a new button between the patient type selection and the circuit type selection. If we now press that button, we access the selection whether the device should be used non-invasively or invasively. If the device is used non-invasively, nothing has changed in regard to the physiological alarm settings. If physiological alarms were set before the update, they are set the same way after the update. If no physiological alarms were set before the update, um, this will also remain the case. This applies to all activated ventilation programs. However, if the device is used invasively, certain presets are applied. If the corresponding alarms were already set and active um, before the update and the alarm limits were stricter than our presets, then the original alarm limits are retained. However, if our presets are stricter than the original alarm limits, the presets are applied and must then be set individually to suit the patient, the ventilation situation, um, and therefore to avoid false positive alarms. Um, again, the motivation behind all these changes was to reliably detect decannulation, in most cases uh, even with default values. 
Now let's have a look at our presets in the alarm menu. To access the presets in the alarm men menu, we first have to switch to uh, invasive ventilation, confirm, and then we can access the alarm limit or the alarm menu and see our presets. In the pediatric setting and leakage system, the preset for the leakage high alarm is 30 liter per minute and the preset for the tidal volume low alarm is 30 milliliter. In the valve systems, the preset for the leakage high alarm is 30 liter per minute, for the VTI low alarm 30 milliliter and for the VTI high alarm 100 milliliter. In the adult setting and leakage system, the preset for the leakage high alarm is 50 liter per minute and the preset for the tidal volume low alarm is 300 milliliter. In the valve systems, the preset for the leakage high alarm is 50 liter per minute, for the VTI low alarm 300 milliliter and for the VTI high alarm 1000 milliliter. In addition to that, and regardless of the setting of the patient type or circuit, the minimum SpO2 our alarm setting is 85% now, and at the bottom of the alarm list, the information that the disconnection alarm is activated can be found, and the disconnection alarm cannot be deactivated. There have also been various changes uh, to the circuit test, for instance, the following selection in the test for leakage circuits. Either a leakage system such as Villa uh, Silent 2 is used, or if we do not use a passive exhalation system for ventilation but a vented mask, then we select this test. Or, if we go to the test for wall circuits, we see the following change. If selecting a single or dual limb circuit without proximal pressure measurement, a message appears stating that the alarm settings must be checked in order to continue to detect a disconnection of the patient. Why is this necessary? If we use a circuit with proximal pressure measurement, the uh, accessories close to the patient, such as catheter mount or HMEF, are measured dur during the circuit test and therefore a disconnection detection is warranted. However, if a circuit without proximal pressure measurement is used, the accessories close to the patient, such as catheter mount or HMEF, are not part of the uh, circuit test and a disconnection detection, therefore, is not always warranted. In order to detect a uh, disconnection in that case, special attention must be paid uh, to setting physiological alarms. Let's go through the circuit test for a circuit without proximal pressure measurement step by step. First of all, we connect all accessories close to the device and close off the circuit. Now we open the circuit. And now after the test is completed, we connect the accessories close to the patient. After that, we go into the alarm menu and set the according physiological alarms. At this point, we would like to address a special feature on the alarm settings. This special feature only occurs in single circuit valve system and concerns the leakage high alarm. If, for example, we are ventilating in a dual limb circuit and have no leakage, the leakage value is specified as zero. 
and reset our leakage high alarm accordingly, for instance to 20 liter per minute. This is possible because the circuit provides us with all information necessary to uh, determine the leakage uh, based on the inspiratory and expiratory information. The situation is different in the single circuit valve system. In the single circuit valve system, uh, to determine a leakage based on the inspiratory and expiratory information is technically not possible because the expiratory information is flushed out through the valve. In order to determine a leakage, a real leakage in the single circuit valve system, um, we need to use a different signal, and that is the inspiratory peak flow signal. Because of the before mentioned reasons, the peak flow has been labeled as a leak in the leakage high alarm setting. Because of the signal used is the inspiratory peak flow, this leads to the indication of a leakage, which in this uh, example is 29 liter per minute, although in reality no leakage is existing. In order to detect a real leakage in the single circuit valve system, um, special attention must be paid at setting the leakage high alarm limit, and that means the limit must be set above the uh, peak flow. If we now want to set the same leakage high alarm limit of 20 liter per minute as in the example before in the double circuit uh, system configuration, to detect a real leakage, we must set it here to 50 liter per minute. That means 20 liter per minute above uh, the displayed peak flow. In addition to the uh, leakage high alarm setting, the peak flow is also indicated in the actual value table of the documentation view. Finally, an information on the improved trigger in the single circuit valve system. In the past, very sensitive trigger settings uh, led occasionally to a buildup that means increased respiratory rates. This update improved the robustness of the inspiratory trigger so that the sensitivity levels can now be used more effectively. If very insensitive trigger settings were used to prevent these increased rates, it uh, may now be beneficial in those cases to readjust the trigger settings. With this short presentation, we hope to give you an overview of the LUISA update 1.9.0007 from Löwenstein Medical and thank you for your attention.